Alright Gallimond fans, like I promised from my EXO2 Gallimond deck profile video, we got nothing but straight fire consistent OTK with the updated Gallimond X build for today. Just before we get started with the video, I got something really cool to share with all of you guys. If you haven't watched our newest Battle of Series with Mario, then be sure to check that out as well. In our latest Battle of X Record series, you will get to see me play the Alphamon X Antibody deck, putting it in action, and playing against Mario's Red X Antibody Omnimon deck. Come watch the Epic Clash of the Royal Knights to find out who comes out on top. Links will be left in the description box down below or the iCard on the top right, right here. Hello Digimon players and fans, welcome back to another Digimon deck profile and in-depth building guide video. Gee, I gotta say, I covered quite a lot of red decks this format so far. We started with Wargreymon X to Black Wargreymon with Gaiomon that mainly has a red base as well. And then now we got Gallantmon which is another red deck. But the fire and heat of the red doesn't stop, as I came up with a build that focuses on trying to OTK just like all the other decks. Like always, we got the combos to show you guys how all of this works together, and definitely you want to stick around for that as well. Gallimon is fairly similar to Grandis deck for this format, and that is because as long as there's something on your opponent's side of the board that can be deleted, you gain a whole lot of advantages and you can capitalize to apply pressure. But since this format focuses more on building and the raising, I made sure that this build can also do exactly the same where in some situations it can actually really pop off even if your opponent does not have a Digimon on board for you to delete. And that is when you can go in heavy with the OTK. Therefore consistency and straight fire is all we need, so let's show you guys what we have in store for the build. Alright, like always, let's begin with our Digi Egg cards. The first I really want to first talk about is the Gigimon from EX2. This one gives us the draw power of when attacking. So I want to talk about how Gallant Mon is actually really, really weak in DP in this current format. It's just not there good enough. And I did heavily emphasize that it is really important to prioritize DP over draw power in BT9. So I did come up with other different egg options that I do want to talk about. So I'm going to leave it open for discussion for you guys to see and let me know what you guys think is better. We have another Gigimon from the BT2. This one does give extra thousand DP, but it does require an opponent to have five or more cards in their trash, which does require a little bit of setup sometimes. So it's not always that consistent. Next, we also have one Kapurimon, which is that if we have a Tamer, we get extra thousand here as well. Not all the time we can always set up for a Tamer. It's also very conditional. But the last one that I think is actually the best consideration out of all of them is the starter deck Koromon. This one's harder to find because the starter deck is not available, but we're always building four or more sources. So we can get that thousand DP a little bit more consistent overall. But this is just the current egg lineup that I have for you guys. You guys can totally decide at the moment. I just opt in for the four copies of Gigimon and that's it. Okay, let's talk about our rookies. First and foremost, all our rookies are just Gilmons. We play the four copies of this starter deck 7, Gallopmon starter deck Gilmon. This one's just always great because it does give us draw power. It does have capabilities of warping, which is nice to have and sometimes that we do, but mainly we play for its inheritable to draw one. Next, we gotta have the Searching Gilmon, newest one from EX2. This one can grab ourselves the Growlmons, the Gallantmons, as well as Takato while on doing so. And then when attacking, we can delete stuff that has 3000 DP or less. Then for the new edition, we do have the four copies of Gilmon X Antibody, just really great for building a bigger stack. It can digivolve for zero on top of Gilmon, but also when digivolving, we can delete one of our opponent's Digimon with 3000 DP or less. Overall, just a lot of small deletion stuff. And then also our turn with the Inheritable, we can add extra thousand to the maximum DP that we get to delete with effects. That's it for all the rookies. Let's talk about our level fours where we have Groundmons. This one is the best Groundmon, I think, in my opinion. The starter deck one as well, because when you do delete something once per turn, you get to gain a memory for it. it's inheritable. That's all it does. 
then we have his X antibody version to Digivolve for zero on top of it. So it's just get to cycle more cards, build a bigger stack, and also adding another extra thousand to the maximum of DP that we can do with DP deletion effects, which is very, very great with the whole synergy of the deck overall. Then to round off, we got one Aguni, just the hybrid to go for game when we need to. Great when we have it, just an extra bonus. If we don't, that's totally fine, but I always just like to have one hybrid just in case. That's it for level fours. We're just moving through this deck profile super quick because now let's get into our level fives, which are basically just our War Groundmons. We got the three copies of the Star Deck War Groundmon here, as well as another four copies of War Groundmon X. Star Deck War Groundmon is very crucial and essential because it gives us our security plus one inheritable. And we really need that because it is sort of like a condition for us to go for that OTK combo, which I will show you guys. But also when attacking, we can delete something that's 3000 DP or less, which is kind of nice as well. War Groundmon X on, on the other hand, very good card because you can Digivolve for zero until War Groundmon. And then it has a very special when Digivolving unique effect where until the end of your opponent's next turn, two of their Digimon on deletion lose one memory. Then if you have War Grandma or X Antibody and its traits, you can choose up to 6,000 DP in total across the board and delete it, which is very nice because it's almost like a mini Atomic Blaster already by itself. So we play four and four copies for consistency so we can build into it very quickly. And that's all we have for the level fives. For the level sixes, we have the three starter deck Gallantmon Gallantmons here. We mainly play it because of its aggression of security plus one. And then also when attacking, we can delete something that's 4,000 DP or less on our opponent's side of the board. But if we don't, we gain extra 3,000 DP. Ideally, we actually want to gain more DP, like I mentioned, because of the power that we really need for Gallantmon. However, deleting things is kind of nice as well. But gaining the power is just more important so that we can swing sway safely into security and not get deleted by the security battle. Then, of course, we have... The X Antibody version, the brand new Gallantmon support right here, Gallantmon X Antibody. We Digivolve for one on top of the Gallantmon, and then when Digivolving, we can delete one of our opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP. Generally, it's very great because our opponent will have like big stacks and one thing just floats on the board, and if we get to delete that, that's great value for us. However, though, if we don't delete anything, we get to unsuspend this Digimon, and actually my main go-to combo and idea is actually we want to have the second part of the effect instead so that we can unsuspend, make another swing, which is really nice. Also, your turn once per turn when opponent's Digimon is deleted, if Gallantmon or X Antibody in this Digimon sources, you can trash the top card of your opponent's security stack, which is very nice because trashing is just always great. No option effects can be activated, no tamer, straight up nothing, which is always very nice. So we always want to be comboing this with our general normal Gallantmon. Of course, going on top of it is really our main ideal. But once again, I'll showcase you guys in the combo segment later how cool this can be really is with some of the combos for straight OTK. For level sevens, two Blitz Omnis, is all we need. We do need to prioritize Blitz Omni a bit more in this build because it helps us go for that final swing that we need for the OTK combo. And that's really it what it is there for. Then always for contingency, I like to have a different option for level seven. So I always do want to have one Gallantmon Crimson Mode. I always really like Crimson Mode's trashing ca capability and its effect because in the late games, we can just do crazy things. If our opponent has two security left and all they need is 10 or more cards in their trash, we get to swing into them, trashing one with its own effect and then trashing another additional because there's 10 or more in their trash. And then we trash two securities, all of them gone. And then we can just straight up swing for game. That's always one of the best feelings ever. So I do always want to play one just in case. Next, let's talk about our Tamers. We have three Takados. Takados is just really core to the Gallantmon strategy because it provides its Blitz. And also when we do delete our opponent's Digimon, we can suspend this Tamer to gain a memory back. So really help us attacking in with Blitz first. And then when we do pop stuff, we can gain that memory to sort of re-continue our turn, which is always very, very nice with those combos. Now, we only play three of because we don't really get a much chance and opportunity to set up that many Takados in this current format. So three just works really great overall with the consistency too and now it's also because we need to make room for memory tamer and the memory tamer we opt in to play is hero now i always would like to opt in to play Ty instead however like i mentioned gallantmon is very very weak in dp and i'm not gonna hide that at all so having hero to help us bump up the dp points is just that crucial instead and that's the reason why i choose to play hero and no ties at all
Then we still have more tamers. We of course have the three copies of cool boys. My whole idea is to really straight up go into our X antibodies as much as possible. So then when we do that, we can gain a lot of value by drawing more cards with cool boy. We can do the same, draw even more and gain more memory back to make even more crazy plays and really just go for the straight fire OTK combo. Once again, just a really generally good card to search and help us find our pieces that we need for X antibody related stuff. Then that's it for the tamers for options. Two red memory boosts. Searching is great. Like I said, so many of my videos, delay is always nice to gain extra memory to make more plays. What else can I say? These cards are just so good. And then to round off, we do, of course, have the two X antibody options. Not only are we going to need it for War Grammon X with its effect, but it's always nice to have it for a Gallant Mon as well. And making those cheeky swings so that we can digivolve on the same time is just very, very cool and very, very neat. So two is all we need. Okay, so now that we got the 50 card main deck done and talked about, let's talk about some other cards that I have considered when building in this deck. The first and foremost, you guys might be wondering, is that we no longer play the EX2 Gallant Mon. Well, the reason is EX2 Gallant Mon is quite decent because it does give you extra DP during your turn. The extra 2,000 making it 14 is fairly nice. Its second effect does let you add more extra DP to your DP related deletion effects, which is kind of nice. Also, when attacking, you can delete up to 6,000 DP as well which is really really good however like i mentioned in this current format there's not a whole lot of things that are floating around on the battle area for you to delete it's more otk people are more focused on being in the raising area it's kind of hard that you get to really consistently use these effects depending on your matchup so even if i were to play this card i would only play it as a one-off every now and then and you know i just want to keep with consistency so my current gallantmon lineup is really the way it is the other gallantmon we got to talk about is definitely the bt2 one this one's really generally just better for grindier matchups and matchups that are slower then you can set yourself up to sort of do the trashing capability however if you're going to play this card i think playing more crimson modes is probably just a better call anyways now there is actually another level five that i think that is very very considerable and that is Rise Greymon. This Rise Greymon can digiburst 2 and let you play a tamer, which is really, really good. Now, we used to play that in our order build, but once again, we took it out because we just want straight fire, straight gas, and straight consistency, and being able to get into a full stack combo way faster. Rise Greymon does delay that a little bit. However, however, it doesn't that does not mean that Rise Greymon is not good at all. Rise Greymon is actually exceptionally good as well in this current format because you have your X antibody sources you can actually make more sources for you to digiburst two times. So if you have a Gimon, you have a Gilmon, you digivolve into Gilmon X and then a level four, and then you have Rise Greymon, that's four sources in total for you to di do your digiburst combo. And it's also not once per turn, so you can digiburst two times playing two tamers, which gives you great, great, great value when you do so. And if you are going that for, for that route and for that combo, I would even suggest playing this tamer right here, Tai Kamiya and Kari Kamiya. At the start of your turn, if you have three or fewer security cards, you gain one memory. If your opponent has three or fewer, you gain an extra memory as well. Potentially, you can gain two, which is very nice. However, when one of your red Digimon or yellow Digimon attacks, you can spend this tamer to have all your opponent's security Digimon minus 2,000 DP for the turn. Like I mentioned earlier, Gallimon is relatively weak in DP power. The second effect of this tamer actually helps mitigate the threats of it being deleted by security battle, which is actually very, very nice inclusion. And then you can also play it for free with Rise Greymon. So that's sort of like a package I would consider if you guys want to go for it. Last but not least, you guys might have noticed we don't have any defenses in our deck. So if you guys do want to go for defensive options, I think Gaia Force is just basically the best way to go. Having this come out security is the best thing ever so that you can stop your opponent from going with their combos and OTKing you overall. Now that we covered all the other cards that we want to include in the entire deck profile, let's show you guys the favorite part, which is the combos. Now for combo number one, it is just straight gas OTK combo. And I want to show you guys right here. So all you really need is actually two memory. Uh, so before you do, do get to that two memory stage, you want to set up by digivolving as much as you can. You want to be digivolving into your Gilmon and then your Gilmon X. Now, the thing is you don't necessarily need to digivolve into your X antibody versions, but it's always very nice because you get to cycle through more cards faster and draw into this combo, which is why it's actually still relatively important. Then next, you definitely want to go into this Graumon that gives you the game memory on deletion. This is very important though, so make sure you have this one in your stack. Then we want to go into Graumon X antibody. 
and then finish off with War Graumon here. Ready to go, opponent does their thing and passes their memory to us at 2. Now there is one very specific condition that you have to meet to, for this combo to pull off and to have this OTK. But it is very common to have this situation happen because like I mentioned, there's not a whole lot of things on the board in this current format. So sometimes your opponent may just have like a simple rookie or a level 4 just floating on there doing nothing. And that's actually perfect for you to go into this combo. Now of course you want to see your whole Digivolution line of your fives and all the way to your six and sevens to onwards so once your opponent puts you a two which is kind of awkward for a uh memory count but really what i'm trying to say is two memory is all you need so what you do is you move your stack up and once again we got to make sure that our opponent has something that is below 6,000 dp on the board so we can actually delete it with effects now we're going to go into a raw ground on x antibody if they have two things that's also okay but make sure you have to have them delete it somehow War Graumon will then mark two targets and then you get to delete something up to total 6,000 or lower. With Graumon X, you can add an extra thousand. With the Gilmon, you get to add another extra thousand, which is fantastic. So you can delete up to 8,000 uh, things on the board. If you do delete one thing, all you need is just one thing. In this case, let's just say we delete one thing. If we get to delete two things, then this makes this combo a little bit different. All we need is one memory instead. But let's just say we delete one because we delete one thing. War Grandmon will give us the lose one memory for us giving us back memory, which is very nice. Grandmon will also give us another memory, so we're currently at four. At this stage, we want to make sure that our opponent has no Digimon on their side of the board because what we want to do is pay the three memory to go into Gallantmon right here. Now, if we go into Gallantmon, we have security plus one. Why is it more ideal to not have your opponent have any Digimon is because we're going to go start swinging with Gallantmon. Now Gallantmon has security plus one and because there's nothing to pop, it will gain the extra 3000 DP to help us safely swing into security. Because if you look at our stack, we don't have any DP buffs whatsoever. So it's very, very vulnerable in getting deleted at security battle. Now we're actually swinging for more than just two checks. We're actually swinging for an extra one check here because we met the condition of this War Grandma Inheritable, so we're swinging in a total for three checks here. Once the three checks go through, fingers crossed, we don't run into anything that's crazy in security, we can then pay one memory. And once again, very important why our opponent does not need to have a Digimon at this current stage is because we go into Gallimon X Antibody, we get to delete one of our opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP, but since there's nothing, we get to unsuspend this guy here. Now, we don't longer have the security plus one of Gallimon, but we still continue to retain the security plus one with War Grandmon. So with Gallimon X Antibody, we can swing for another two checks, and that's five security checks in total in one go. And you guys know what's coming. You basically, with zero security left at your opponent's side, you finish the game with Blitz Omni here. So that's it for combo number one. Very straightforward, very super simple, but we do have more combos to showcase you guys how it may be in different scenarios. It, you may play a bit differently and more control. In a different scenario, which may actually happen quite often, is that let's just say you have Takato and your cool boy and it changes a whole lot of different things. Even just Takato itself just makes it a whole lot better. You can actually get into your combo way more aggressive and very differently and use its blitzes as well. So once again, back to here, we have our War Grandmon in our raising ready to go. Let's push it out. Ideally, once again, go into War Grandmon X. Uh, we have something to pop, which is great. We mark two things. We get to pop two things this time. So we get to gain the two memory. We'll also get to suspend Cool Boy to gain another memory back and draw a card. And then Grandmon will give us another one memory here to work with. That's five memory in total. And we can even also suspend the Takato to go all the way to six. How crazy is that? And those doesn't even require a memory tamer at all. So this is definitely the most optimal way. You want to pay three memory to go into this Gallantmon once again. At this point, if you have either this Gallantmon or Gallantmon X Antibody, it doesn't really matter. But ideally, you want to have Gallantmon first. You swing with Gallantmon. If you do get to delete stuff, it's okay. But hopefully not. Instead, so you can give it extra DP. Swing for three checks just like before once again. And then you can go into X Antibody for one nothing to delete then that's fine if there's something to delete sure go for it but ideally once again we don't want to delete anything and then we can also just sit here instead because in this case let's just say we have crimson mode so identify how much cards your opponent has in trash if they have a lot 
with only two security left because you did three checks earlier, you know what that means, right? All you need is 10 cards in their trash. Then you can just simply go into Crimson Mode, pass them the four. Crimson Mode will gain Blitz because of Takato. You swing in with Crimson Mode for trashing two of their security and you're just straight swinging in for game and just there you go. That's another way to do it. That will conclude for my very own deck building strategy and in-depth guide for the Gallimont X antibody deck profile. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please give it a like. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or questions, be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below. Overall, the Gallimont build I decided to go with this format has both control and OTK potential. However, they do operate very separately depending on the matchup you're facing against, which is very nice. I will admit though, there are several weaknesses with this deck, and mainly the DP power is really lacking, which is one of the greatest weakness that Gallantmon can be very easily deleted by Security Battle. However, when it does pull off the multiple checks safely and you can take down your opponents very very quickly and pierce through all their security with Gallantmon's spear along with the help of Takato Blitz so that you can attack much earlier on. So that will wrap up for our video for today. If you guys want to see more other deck profiles for the BT9 format that we haven't covered yet, then be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned. As always, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. This is Vault, signing out.